got some good news. Our mortgage for our new house was approved today. That means I'm definitely, definitely, definitely getting out of this friggin' box that I live in. That was the big thing, waiting for the mortgage to get approved. That is finally done. Ugh, just can't wait to get out of here. You hear that? You hear that? That's all you hear around here. All you friggin' hear around here every day is somebody's friggin' leaf blower, weed whacker, lawnmower, wood chippers, fucking gas company is gonna start digging up the street again after they already dug up the street two years ago. I think they all play with themselves. I don't get it. But, uh, I'm pretty much done with this uh, this area. God, it's too congested. I can't take it. There's Lucy. Here, girl. Lucy's very gentle when she takes a fry. And Gia is a little bit, a little more aggressive when she takes a fry. That's why they're two different personalities. Uh, here's a test for you. This is proof that McDonald's have the best fries on the planet. If you can go through a McDonald's drive-thru, and take your, this is when, you, I'm not talking about when you're eating in the car. When you go through the drive-thru to pick up food to take home. If you can get home without unraveling that bag and taking one fry out and eating it. I'd be amazed. <clears throat> I can't do it. I've tried it and tried it and tried it. I said, no, I'm not going to open the bag let all the heat out to get one fry. Because I can't fucking wait. I only live two blocks away. And I still cannot do it. That's what I'm talking about. After you eat their salty ass, greasy, delicious fries, what's your body craving? Something sweet. And I don't think there's anything better than a McDonald's hot apple friggin' pie. So, that was delicious. And of course, Coca-Cola. Best, best Coke in the world is Coca-Cola. Fuck Pepsi. Uh, this video is going to be about recent purchases I made and my likes and dislikes. It's good to do a video like this once in a while. You know, if you make a few purchases, if you had the guns for a while, you're shooting them and all. You'll find out later uh, what you don't like. You can never tell in the beginning when you're buying a gun if you're going to like it or not. I don't care who you are. Okay, you just can't. You have to shoot it for a while. Turn my phone off because without a doubt it's going to ring. So, um, these are the most recent purchases I've made this year. This year is the FN57, which to me is just a fun, fun gun. What a great bug out bag, bug out bag gun, and a shit hit the fan gun. It's very reliable. It's extremely light. Holds a lot of ammunition. Uh, if you're in the in the free state of Pennsylvania, it holds a lot of ammunition. If you're in a uh, retarded state like New Jersey, yeah, it'll only hold 15 rounds or 10 or whatever the hell they're doing down there. Or even uh, worse, New York or Maryland or California and. All the, all, you know, all the states where there's mass shootings because everybody knows where every crazy person that wants to do something like that, they always do it in a state where guns are regulated more than anywhere because they know no one has a gun. You hear what I'm saying? Um, I mean, I went to uh, Upper Darby. Upper Darby High. I mean, Upper Darby High has been there for half a century. In Pennsylvania, guess how many school shootings were there that I can think of? Well, you start with the FN. The first thing about the FN is I haven't been shooting it a lot, but I have shot it, and um, you, you know you can't you can't shoot as accurate as you think you can with this because there's no recoil. Because you got to remember the sights are really really high. Uh, I guess they're high in case you want to get a threaded barrel for a suppressor. But um, you still can shoot 
accurate. I'm not saying that, but it's not like you think it's going to be. I mean, you you're going to think you can shoot this like a tack driver, and really, it's it's really not like that. But you can shoot very tight groups with it, and again, with enough trigger time behind any any gun, you will eventually be able to shoot it like a tack hammer. That's all trigger time. But uh, don't buy this under the impression that you're going to, you're going to shoot like a pro because it just doesn't work like that. It's just not. But it is a it is a cool gun. It's a most importantly reliable gun. It's a high quality gun. What I like about it is it holds a lot of ammunition and it's very light. It's so light. It feels like a toy. It really does, which we know it's not. And uh, yeah, that's the only thing uh, I don't like about it. It it it, let, it misled me in accuracy. I thought I was going to be like be able to hit a mosquito right between the ball sack with it, and it, it just isn't like that. But that's probably because. I'm used to Glocks because I shoot Glocks in 1911s. They're my two favorite guns. So I need more trigger time behind this uh, to get my, uh, you know, to be satisfied with it and to get that that nice feeling about it. But uh, it's still an awesome gun, really awesome, uh, a lot of fun. Another thing I don't like about it is uh, the magazine release on the corner here. It has a very sharp corner, and the bummer about that is on on this particular model of the FN, the magazine's metal. So I'm not going to try to round that off on a file and screw it up. I'm just going to live with it. But when I punch out and have two hands on the gun, uh, when you're shooting, that corner, that mag digs into your palm and it's very, very, very uncomfortable and really annoying. Other than that, it's a badass gun. It's nice. Uh, the Glock 42. Um, I've had this for a while now. I got about 600 rounds through it. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to think of something I don't like about it. Um, the only thing I don't like about it, I mean, as far as accuracy, it's spot on for me. As far as reliability, it's so far zero failure, 600 rounds. Um, the only thing, like if I, if I would change anything about it, I wish they would have made it more um, like in Gen Gen 3 form. This is more in a Gen 4 form. Uh, if you have a Gen 4 Glock, you know, I'm, I'm not saying nothing bad about Gen 4 Glocks, but I had two of them. The first one I had was a nightmare. That's when they first came out. So, I, you know, I just, I'm not saying Gen 4 Glocks ain't good, but every time I hear there's a problem with a Glock, 9 times out of 10, even at the shop, 9 times out of 10, it is a Gen 4. But we, I don't hear that many problems about them anymore. You know what I mean? But if I do... It's like always the Gen 4. That's the truth. If you have a Gen 4 and you don't like it, tough shit. That's, that's, I'm just telling you what I hear. It's every time. Once in a while you hear a Gen 3 messing up. You know, every, no, nothing's perfect. But out of the Gen 3 and the Gen 4, uh, the Gen 3s are definitely, as of right now, still more reliable than the Gen 4s. I've, I've already known police departments that had to send back like uh, 50... 50 Gen 4s because they were they were messing up. You know, when you hear that stuff, it's like, whoa, you know. But, like I said, uh, customers that purchase in Gen 4s at the shop, they're not having any problems. Uh, all the Gen 4s we have for rent in the rental cabinet, they're not having any problems. So, I don't know. That law enforcement thing might have been a long time ago when they first came out. It's just, like I said, it's, it's hearsay. But when I, what I'm saying is when I do hear it, it's almost always the Gen 4. So if I could change something about the Glock 42, just to make me feel better inside, not that it's probably going to mess up, I wish it was a Gen 3 style. That's all. Um, like I said, you know, the Glock 19, you know, people are like, what's the difference between Gen 4 and Gen 3? Well, the Glock 19 uh, is the best example. It has a double recoil spring. Uh, the Glock 19 does not need a double recoil spring. The Glock 17 does not need a double captured recoil spring. They've been doing great for years, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of rounds of reliability with the single recoil spring. It does not need a double recoil spring. I don't know why they did that. Something to do with reducing recoil. Whatever. The guns don't didn't need it to begin with. So, I don't know. I just stay clear of that gun of that generation. 
But yeah, the uh, 42 is uh, definitely uh, my favorite 380 I ever had. I've had quite a few 380s. And uh, I can shoot accurately with it. That's why I like it. A lot of guns that are small, very hard to shoot straight. And this really makes it easy to shoot straight. And you got to know, put the talon grips on there, night sights, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, I noticed that the, uh, the 42 does have a little bit of a stiffer trigger. Just a little stiffer than your uh, larger Glocks. I don't know why, but it does. But it still has that classic reset is why I can stay on target with Glock pistols. So if there's anything I would change, that's it. Other than that, no, I wouldn't change anything about it. Yep, got the little pinky extension on there. Great little carry gun, wonderful for the summer. Something, something you just want to throw in your pocket. Uh, this is like borderline pocket gun, you know, uh, depending on the size of, of who you are. A bit to a big guy, this is a pocket gun. You know, I've thrown this in my back pocket. It's borderline. It's, it, it could be big for a pocket gun, but you still could consider it a pocket gun. It's nowhere near like an LCP, but it smokes the LCP as far as shooting it straight. And, you know, that's a big thing right there. But the LCP is very, very tiny, very convenient. So that's, that's your call, you know. Uh, sacrifice a little size and get a nicer gun that, can, that you can shoot better with. It's, it's up to you. Depends all what all what you want it for. It's all different reasons, but yeah, I wouldn't change anything about the Glock 42 except for what I just said. Um, <clears throat> here is the uh, the, uh, the PAP, the AK. Uh, so far, I've been shooting this pretty often, not a lot, but enough to. Uh, it's so much fun. Uh, this thing has such a sweet ass trigger. I really can stay on target with it. Dead nuts with iron sights very, very easily uh, because it has such a smooth trigger. Trigger is everything. Trigger is like almost, almost just as important as having your sights straight on a, on a weapon. Uh, it has a double hook trigger. It's very, very smooth. You can control it. I love this thing. So the only thing I don't like about it is, uh, is how the, um, the brace attaches. Not really crazy about how that's on there because it's just held on by pressure of the uh, of the pistol grip, but it hasn't moved around. And like I said, I put a gasket in between here. I used a talon grip gasket to give it more traction so it doesn't slide around. I think that helped between that and the rubber hoe grip up against it um, really locked it in good. So I don't think I'm going to have an issue with it. I really don't. But you know, I really don't. Not too crazy about how that goes on there. But like I said, I, I think I I fixed that doubt problem that I have there. Uh, another thing is the flash. It does have a really big flash and uh, I don't like that but you know like I said I'm just I'm telling you everything I don't like about uh, recent purchases but it's not a deal breaker it's not a big deal. Nothing going to make me sell it or anything. I know it's cool that a, that a big flame comes out and all but when you're trying to shoot seriously and accurately with it it kind of distracts you a little bit but this gun runs um, beautiful like a well oiled machine you know uh, and it's probably my favorite pistol um, high power pistol is this uh, PAP very very nice the only thing is the two things I told you what I didn't like about it but uh, un friggin believable I mean for the price you pay for that thing is so dirt cheap and you have such a beautiful sophisticated weapon it really is um, the Sig Sauer M400. Uh, I like everything about it except one thing. It has a gritty trigger. I love how the brace is on this. It looks like you know, like it's supposed to. It's, it's, it hooks right on the back. It doesn't go under the pistol grip, which that is an improvement over the PAP. Uh, so it's it's just more uniform looking. Looks looks like it's supposed to be there. Um, I like I like the ambi features. That's all cool. But the one thing I don't like about it is it's got a it's got a pretty nasty trigger. Okay. Oops. So when I pull it, it's just gritty, gritty. Oh man, it's gritty. It's gritty, 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 gritty. So it really it really affects the accuracy when you're trying to shoot bullseye, like really split hairs. That trigger like that really affects your shooting. 
So if I'm going to do anything to this, I might buy, might buy a mill spec, pre-polished mill spec trigger. They're online for like 60 bucks. A friend of mine told me about them. And just replace that. But everything else is fine. Uh, is it a problem enough that, that it's making me want to replace it? Yeah, because when I shoot the AK, it's like silk bang. Silk bang. That's what I want this to be. Especially this is tw tw two times the price is the AK. And the AK's trigger smokes this thing. So I gotta uh, either polish the trigger, which I which I'm not experienced to doing it, so I'm not going to do that, or buy a pre-polished mill spec trigger, which I think that's the way to go. I'm not going to go crazy and get a tiny trigger, and you know, it's 200 hours for some friggin' drop-in trigger. I think that's that's just that insane, and I don't want the trigger to pull to be too too light either, because you know, someday. You never know, you might have to use something like this for self-defense. Hopefully, God, never. But if you do, you don't want a light, light, light trigger. So, yeah, that's the only thing I don't like about this is the trigger. And my Colt, which I should have out here too, uh, the carbine, uh, that has the same kind of trigger. Very, very gritty mil-spec trigger. It's just how they are, that's how they come, whatever. The best trigger I ever felt out of a box with an AR is a Rock River Arms. They have a really nice silky trigger right out of the box, but uh, anyone else's was always you had to either get it polished or uh, just change the trigger out. So, whatever. But that's pretty much it. I love the length. The barrel could be a little shorter, but it's still, it's the same length as the AK. It's 28 inches from end to end, so it's still nice and small. Um, it's great though. It runs flawless. It's, it's, I'm shooting the hell out of it and, uh, it's running perfect. Uh, haven't cleaned it yet. Okay, so that's that's the only thing. The price is the price on this is pretty pretty hefty compared to the uh, definitely compared compared to the AK. Way 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 a lot more money than the AK, but it's all what you want, you know. You know, there's AR guys, there's AK guys. I like them both. Figures, right? I gotta like them both. So. Uh, as of right now, I can shoot this way better than I can shoot this, all because of the trigger. It all comes down to that. I uh, got a new knife. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys. I know it's not a knife channel, but this is really superior. Uh, this is uh, zero tolerance. I don't, even, I don't even know the model number, so I don't even know. So I'm not a knife guy. I'm not going to pretend to be. It's OD green. It has a uh, forward assist. It has the tiger stripe blade. Okay. Super hard, very high quality steel. These knives are uh, probably one of the most heavy built folding knives you can buy. I mean, this thing is a war horse. I mean, I have I have knives from Cold Steel, and they're oh they're nice knives. I have Cold Steel knives, but this thing is uh, by leaps and bounds more heavy duty than a Cold Steel folding knife. And it's zero tolerance makes this knife. Bought it off a friend of mine who is a retail dealer. Um, see if I can read some stuff off it for you. I don't know, I don't know shit about this. Made in USA, thank God for that. Uh, I trying to kind of steal. It is S30V. I don't know what that means. I don't know what the hardness is and all that. It's probably all in the box. But it has that metal alligator type, you know, that reptile feel. OD green, black, it's, it's just a heavy duty knife. Really, you're not even supposed to use this for, for cutting boxes open and stuff like that, but, you know, chances me defending myself with a knife, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but I use it for everything. The good thing about it is the blade is such high quality steel that even if you do use it for other than self-defense, the blade stays sharp. And... If it gets dull, you send it back and it's guaranteed for life and they sharpen the blade forever. They'll, they'll guarantee the edge of the blade. And uh, very, very, very nice. I'm so glad I finally got a very high quality folding knife. I never had one. I have a Kershaw. I have an older Benchmade, but this is like super nice, this thing. Really, really nice. I really love it. So there's that. I wanted to show you that. And a buddy of mine came in. Uh, the shop and gave this to me. This is for um, what you do with this is from the armoryracks.com and what it is is it's a bracket with a stem and if you need a place to put your firearm where you need to get at it quickly especially in a store 
under the counter, you mount it to the counter, you slide, now they have this coated with rubber to protect your rifling in your barrel. You slide the gun right on there like that and you bolt this under the counter and ain't that awesome? You can get at your gun right away if you had to. Someone's, you know, trying to hold the store up or trying to rob you. You can just get right at it, take it right off and that's quick. I mean, I even like that better than the magnet idea because I like the angle that it holds it. It holds it right how you would grab it. I mean, I guess a magnet would be like this. I don't know, it depends. But this just seems a lot more accessible. And uh, depending on how you mount it, I just want to show you that. The ArmoryRacks.com, wherever they are, that's where you can get them. I'm sure they're not a lot of money. I just want to thank my friend for bringing that in. Thank you very much, bro. I've been meaning to show that. And I'm saving it. I'm saving it for when I move in my new house. And it's going to be in a nice secret spot where I know I can get at my firearm quickly if, God forbid, I need it. So, thank you so much for that. I know this video is kind of long, but there's some stuff I just wanted to show you guys.